What's up, everybody? This is Media Pass. Welcome to it. How's it going? My name is Daniel Gouda, and yeah, this is the first episode. Quick intro to the podcast. This is videographers talking to other videographers. Nothing crazy, uh, nothing too strict and formal. Um, It's meant to just be kind of relaxed conversations. So so that's the plan. I'm going to have a guest on each episode, and we'll go from there. Today, I'm going to intro to the first guest. I think it's a pretty awesome first guest. Let's just put it like that. I know him personally, and I know for a fact that he does amazing work. He does awesome work. And on top of that, he's got a really great work ethic. He's a great guy. Um, and yeah, you probably know him if you know anything about Vancouver Island. Let's get to him. Tanner Biggin, what's up, buddy? Okay, so let's get into the thought process behind how I put together my office here. And ever since I saw it the first time, I've been really interested in trying this technique out myself. Five ways to instantly make Hey, how's it going, Dan? Pretty good, man. How are you? Good, good, good. good. A very uh, humbling intro. Much, much appreciated. <laughs> well, I had to start it off right, right? <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. No, I'm doing good. That's good to hear. Yeah, what have you been up to lately? I, I'm. It's hard to not go too formal on this, but as you know, I want to keep this relaxed. And uh, yeah, we've had a hundred yeah. conversations before, but I know. Ah, uh, how's it going? Good. I just finished up my uh, last wedding of the season. Um, nice, nice. thought was good, and that's actually uh, went out with a bang. That's going to be one for the books. So I'll tell you that much. Tell me more. Tell me. Tell me <laughs> about it, and tell me a little bit about the wedding season. Uh, well, wedding season was good. Uh, super busy. I think. It, I. I mean, you'd also know this. I feel like we're probably still in a bit of a maybe a bit of a backup from COVID weddings a little bit. Um, because it, it was it was a pretty crazy summer. I'm mean, talking with other people. Uh, they said it was you know busier for them than normal as well. Um, but can't complain about that. Uh, but the last wedding just recently, uh, it was like a two day wedding ceremony on one day, reception on the next, but the ceremony day, uh, obviously it's November, uh, when, when the wedding was, and it was, it was raining out. It started raining during the ceremony. Um, but it was kind of right when the ceremony was just kind of ending and the couple decided to like just really embrace it. I was looking at them. I was like, my camera gear was soaked and I was already kind of like all in at this point. <laughs> and I was like, well, if my camera gear gets run at this point. I guess it is what it is because I was already outside and it was just pouring, right? So I asked the couple, I was like, are you guys cool with the, just uh, going out in the street and getting some like just candid in the crazy rain photos and videos and stuff like that? And they were just all in and it turned out just incredible. Like just, they were just soaked, right? But they were running down the street uh, with each other and everything and it turned out just beautiful. So I I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that that's awesome to hear. That's awesome. Yeah, sometimes- <laughs> And my camera like, equipment was okay. Yeah, I was gonna, that was the first question. I, I remember I've <laughs> shot one similar on like the top of a mountain, like Mount Washington in the rain. And yeah, sometimes yeah. you just have to embrace it, as you said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I I did. I had obviously some- coverage for my camera and i took it off its gimbal and everything because it was easier to try and cover without it on and everything handheld from there but um i get to some point it was raining so hard that it just at, at some point it just didn't matter <laughs> yeah nice nice so yeah other than that it was good good wedding season though. it was I good it was good like wedding, wedding crashers right now but right no no it was good yeah, yeah it was it was great enjoyed it all um had some good food as well i'll tell you that <laughs> nice yeah that's yeah that's, that's <laughs> right <sweet to> hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's I honestly do miss that from shooting weddings consistently. Uh, just a little bit of background: Tanner and I have shot, I mean, like two hundred plus, however many weddings combined, probably, um, and a lot of those have been together. So we're definitely familiar to weddings. Um, yeah, the one thing you don't don't miss is uh, the crazy hours, and one thing you do miss is the food. So. <laughs> Is the food. Yeah. It's always good. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So yeah, just leading into it. I mean, I've got a bunch of questions lined up for you, but sure. Yeah. Um, th- I, this one's kind of like a standard question. I just kind of don't like to necessarily ask right up front to videographers, but I think it's pretty, uh, telling to find out what, what the answers are. So let's just ask, um, what brand of cameras do you use now? And are you a Mac or PC guy? And what editing platform do you use? Um, as far as cameras go, uh, Sony guy, big big Sony guy. Love the mirrorless. Obviously, more companies are obviously doing that now. Canon's uh, come into that uh, area 
as well. But um, I used to, my first camera was actually, a, I believe, a Canon. And then it was like two weeks later, I was using my buddy's Sony, an A5000, very, very simple little camera, and uh, instantly switched straight then and there and haven't gone back since. Uh, I, I think, personally, I think if you're doing video, I think Sony's the way to go. Um, but yeah, you know, Sony maybe I'm, as well. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm being biased not that standpoint. I don't know. I, I just really enjoy Sony and, and the capabilities of it and, and the colors and stuff from it. So, um, as far as my Mac or PC guy, I am a Mac, uh, just recently bought the new M3 MacBook pro, uh, spec that bad boy out. Uh, not cheap. Let me tell you that, but, uh, the editing I've been doing on it has been incredible compared to my old base model M1 Mac. Book Pro and like it's just been firing through layers of 4K footage and uh, I'm using Final Cut Pro uh, for that matter when editing yes. and it's just been like it, my workflow has just been before it was kind of frustrating the app would crash if there's too much footage in it trying to render itself I mean, or we not could, enough we could make this a memory, podcast but, about like the M1 M2 M3 series of MacBooks and we could talk for hours but yeah the, it's insane right? the, the capabilities I you just got your hands on the M3 I've, I'm on an M2 yeah. still but some of the stuff you've been showing me and some of the stories you've been uploading are insane. So yeah, that's, it's definitely something yeah. I wanted to hear more about. <laughs> it's great. Been loving it for sure. All right. So yeah, what's, uh, I know you I know we just spoke about wedding season and everything like that, but what's your favorite mm-hmm. industry to create for? Um, whether that be like music, sports, weddings, film documentaries, you know what I mean? What, what, yeah. what's your, what's your niche? For for sure, um, you know it's it's interesting. Uh, you know, I, and I thought this was like a, a big niche for a lot of people. But more, I talk to other videographers. They don't. Some of them don't like shooting uh, in the industry that I prefer shooting in. A lot of the time, I'm just kind of shocked. But for me, it's like uh, it's music for sure, like concerts and events and stuff like that. Um, I think it just I've always been a bit musically inclined myself, and then being able to capture that moment and that energy that these artists can bring to. Uh, on the stage there i i really enjoy photographing and videoing and putting something together i just i just think it's amazing um you know i'm not a you know I, i'm not gonna say i'm not like a huge fan of, of doing other things but that's just like where my like my main focus really is is that is uh is concerts and stuff like that and even like weddings and everything um or if it's doing stuff for like branded work i'm a big fan of like just shooting something very um raw if that makes sense like um not with all the crazy like stage lights and cameras and everything like that and having like a team of like 20 people and everything like i, I like to like make something pretty real um yeah, I, like, I, used to, in that sense. I used to call that candid, candid yeah exactly candid. Yeah, i don't know if that's candid. a proper sorry term, that's right. the word that's that, that, probably that's just couldn't think of the term um but yeah very candid like that and then even with with concerts and stuff like that it's just because you're, you're capturing what's happening on stage in the moments and and interaction with the artists and and the crowd and stuff like that and so um for me I, i've been i've been loving uh, dabbling in that industry just this past summer i really started to make a push for it and it's um it's been amazing since yeah no it's been really cool to watch because i know you've like we've obviously known each other for a while but for anyone yeah. listening I know you've always wanted to shoot for music and like, it, it's awesome seeing you go into that industry because mm. yeah, like it's really cool. You talking about it and then kind of hearing you talk about it and watching some of your videos, because that's kind of exactly how I feel as a viewer is mm-hmm. y'all have seen crazy rowdy edits of concerts, but then when mm-hmm. you watch it and you are finished watching it, you don't really feel like you know anything about the performance necessarily. It's more like a music video, quote unquote. Mm. Um, yeah. at least from my perspective. So yeah, I, I definitely agree with like the candid approach, whatever we want to call it. I don't, I'm not sure if yeah. that's the proper term here, but yeah, I, I definitely, uh, yeah, it's really fun to watch your content because it's so obvious when somebody is passionate about like the industry that they're creating for. And that's why I like that question because a lot of videographers, especially in like small towns and not specialized videographers find themselves working on so many different industries and so many different projects where it's really good to know just from like another videographer, friends, whatever perspective, what their favorite thing to shoot for is because yeah, it's just, it's so apparent when you're watching it. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's, it's like anything, you know, like if someone came to me and was like, Hey, we have this, uh, you know, if a, if a car company came to me, so we have this crazy car to shoot, you know, uh, you know, what do you think about doing it? You know, I could do it for sure, but I'm going to be honest. Like, the odds of me of giving like you that shoot or calling you up being like, Hey, I have someone who's actually might be even better for this shoot because it's not that I'm not passionate or have, or have interest in cars, but I know like for your, someone like yourself that 
that video because of your passion for cars would probably turn out that much better right um yeah, no, I, because I, of you, how, i appreciate hearing that obviously a lot right and, and yeah, that's the same so, thing with me with weddings now is like i you've well overtaken me with weddings and with music as well but like those live performance videos is it's the exact same thing i'm going to be reaching out to you and that's why anyone who is a videographer or even a creative i think it's so important to have other creatives in the exact same field or in a similar field as friends, but actually friends so that you don't feel that pressure to, I have to do everything and have to be creative Mm -hmm. because it'll force that creative outlook and it may not result in the best product. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not a matter of not being able to do said project. It's just a matter of being like, Hey, like if I can bring someone along maybe with me on this, who, who I know is really passionate about this, you know, it can be that much better kind of thing, right? right? Um, Yeah. So I think it's also interesting for people just to know, at least for, I find it interesting is growing up, you played sports like competitively. And I know people probably say that a lot, but I, we played somewhat together. And I know some of the teams of hockey and things like that you played on, and it's definitely yeah. was at the upper tier level of competitive. Um, So yeah, just, it's, it's interesting to me how that has affected you as a videographer. So, you know, I, I definitely look back at it now and, um, and, and realize what it kind of gave me, you know, as, as much as the, you know, every sport has its crazy politics and you go through a lot of highs and lows, sometimes more lows here and there with everything going on in the world of sports. But as, as you know, being on a, on a team and having to, um, work as a team can be huge, even in the photography and videography world, because you know, if you have a team you're working with or a crew, you got to know how to coordinate that, how to work with them. Um, you know, a few of my teams, I was, you know, having to be a leader on those teams. So obviously I had to take a leadership role in that, as- in that aspect and figure things out. And um, it-, it taught me a lot of responsibility and a lot of discipline as well. Um, you know, in hockey, if you're not performing well, you're not going to play, right? It's like any sport. You're not going to play. Coach isn't going to play. Uh, in in the world of videography, though, if you're not you know, if you did, it wasn't your best, let's say, performance as far as shooting an event or a wedding or whatever it is that you're that you're doing, um, you know, you can at least you can look back on that and go, okay, where did I, you know, mess up on? What do I need to improve on? Kind of thing, right? Um, so for me, you know, I think overall it was really just the, the discipline of it all and uh, making sure that end of the day that I just I learn from my mistakes if I make any and uh, I move forward from there and it's I guess same idea you know in sports you're training like your body obviously physically um and I know for me with doing this kind of work I I still have to train my body physically because as you know doing weddings for 10 hours a day it's not easy and holding a gimbal all day is not light um so training uh your body for that and then also mentally as well yeah no I love it I love that answer yeah that's head on the nail for me I agree with everything you said and then with everything that you just said in mind. So it's kind of speaking about the whole, like I wouldn't get played if you don't play well type of scenario Mm -hmm. sticking to videography over the years. I think that's kind of related to that is what has changed in you over the years to change your quality. So obviously anyone hopefully is going to kind of progress with the times. We're still not shooting on 1080p cameras for a reason. Um, Yeah. Yeah. But with that, you have to be able to utilize that and you have to be able to, I could say a million things here, but yeah, you already, you get what I'm saying. What's, what do you, what's changed in you over the years to keep your quality at work? The, at the level that it is i you know i think it, it is about always in, improving and always having a standard for yourself and not expecting anything less right and it, it can't be obviously all about just getting a paycheck end of the day like yes me that to, to live and everything but you know it's about keeping that passion and fire burning and everything and for you know for me i think that when I first started off, I was, you know, I was copying other, you know, videographers or creators that I saw online. And I think that's okay to a certain point. And then eventually I had to create my own and, and try and figure out like, what was my style? What was Tanner's style of, of, of shooting? And, you know, how can I maybe incorporate a little bit of, of people who inspire me, but also get in my own style. And so I think over the years, I've been slowly trying to brand my own thing here and there. And trying to step away from trying to be like everybody else, if that makes sense. Like, yes, everybody's going to, you know, sync uh, a video up to a song if there's like certain beats in the song here and there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's just certain basic things that I think every creator's kind of going to do here and there a little bit, um, which is totally fine and it makes sense. But trying to 
find my style and the kind of videos that I like to make um, over the years, you know, has been definitely, a, I won't say a battle, but definitely something that just takes time. And I don't think it happens right away for everyone. Yeah. And I think that's when the work ethic comes in and I mean, yeah. there's a million roads that people go down to get to where they are. But I just think it's kind of all relates back to knowing that you played con- competitive sports growing up. Um Mm-hmm. Kind of what affects me as well yeah so yeah and it, it's definitely even goes to like you know i don't play hockey as much anymore just about maybe once a week but obviously you know you, you age out at a certain age <laughs> um but uh, i've really gotten in, yeah <laughs> they can't mine definitely not man the knees are oh dude at the gym trying to do squats now my knees like lock up half the time it's so bad but <laughs> don't don't give me uh, i know right it's like oh but um i've now been playing a lot more golf uh over the years and an interesting aspect because on a on a, on a you know a hockey team soccer team basketball team whatever you have a team right so if you're not performing well maybe some of your other teammates are able to pick that up the slack right and it, it happens um when i'm playing golf it's just me <laughs> you know what i mean like it's it's just you and it's been really interesting mentally um uh, you know, when I, cause I've been doing it a lot more and really trying to dial down my game there and realizing that like, it is, it is just me. Like when you really think about it and with the, with the video work too, like, yes, you have people like friends and, and people around to support you, but at the end of the day, like you are your business. It is just you in that aspect. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. And a hundred percent. And I love the golf comparison because anyone I think who's played more than like two holes of golf can, can, can a hundred percent relate to that. It's the most frustrating sport in the world on a bad day. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, kind of related to that as well as um, I think not enough people speak about this It's something that's kind of becoming more common to talk about, but are you hard on yourself and your work or do you love your recent videos? It's kind of a similar question when yeah. it gets asked, do they watch their, their recent work or do they watch their own mm-hmm. films? I think, you know, it's funny. Cause yeah, a lot of actors actually sometimes don't watch their own films here and there um but i think the best the best do and i definitely go back and watch my you know when you're editing obviously you're watching back so many times right um but even after it's done been published released or whatever i always watch them back and i always try to think about what i can do better for you know for instance um the road to sunfest documentary i made of the band born reckless going up to sunfest here you know that was something was like a passion project for me but i've i always watch that back and think about what could i could have done better kind of thing i always watch that back and, and nitpick little areas in it um considering it was it was a documentary filmed just by myself i had no other help no other nothing else and it wasn't even like really coordinated i just followed them around when they had like rehearsals or shows and then their big show up in sunfest like just filming all that and then getting back and trying to figure out puzzling it all but together I think the kind answer of thing. is yes i think the answer is yes because <laughs> I, I i mean it's it's Again, this goes with like any creative, but it's it's so funny because like I do it the same and like whether it be yesterday's video, sometimes I'll still be happy with it. But if I've released a yeah. video a week ago, I'm almost guaranteed looking at that thing and nitpicking the heck out of it. Um, and just, yeah, yeah it, it's it's for sure super common to be really hard on ourselves. And I think that's like one of the reasons that we all keep creating, but it's also mm-hmm. one of the hardest things to go through. So it, yeah. it's just, I think, good to be talked about because the more we all hear it's common, <laughs> the better it feels, I guess, yeah. on those days. Exactly. And, and you know, nothing will ever be re- released. Like anything you ever do, um, editing, it's never going to be released maybe exactly the way you want it or perfect. Otherwise, it'll never be get released, right? If you, if you just keep looking at it and, and trying to make it perfect and, put, and keep editing, keep editing, you can only edit so much. Like at some point, you're going to have to release it. And there's like a mindset of, of understanding that not every video that you're going to make is going to be perfect. In fact, no, there is no perfect, right? But if you were trying to aim for that, that's great because you're doing the best you can. But don't sit back on a video and not release it because you don't think it's perfect because, you know, it, otherwise it'll never be released. Can you imagine if we sat down with our wedding videos and just didn't give them to the client if they weren't perfect? Like, we just I, I, wouldn't get paid. We'd have some it, angry it, customers. You know what I mean? It like, only gets, you, it only gets harder to. when you get those timelines of projects of three or four days or it's similar in weddings when you get the 24 hour turnaround for a reception video or something like that Mm -hmm. you gotta draw a line in the sand for yourself um yeah but it gets really hard uh personally i know from experience um Mm -hmm. yeah i I just think it's it's something i'm going to be asking everyone (laughs) okay yeah so related to that question 
Um, what project are you most proud of? Um, everyone assumes probably for any sort of creative videographer, photographer, musician, whatever it is, it's their most recent project. Um, mm -hmm. I know for myself, uh, I'm constantly and consistently learning. Um, so what's, what would be yours? Is it your recent or is it not so recent? Maybe it's because of like a personal attachment to not necessarily like the people in the video, but just the video itself. Right. Um, for mine, it, it's definitely a, the, the recent one is definitely that documentary I think. And it's, it's not the fact that it's like, you know, it, it was, it was a long thing to film and, you know, looking, looking back on it, um, when I watch it again, I putting together something like that, knowing that I did that, um, still kind of, I don't, I don't want to say blows my mind, but it's definitely, you know, interesting that it was just, you know, as candid as, as that documentary was, it was just something that I was, I shocked myself with that when I was filming it, there was no plan. I was just filming what was kind of happening here and there. I had an idea of how I kind of wanted to go, but I remember getting back and laying all the footage out on my computer and, and getting time to end you know, sitting down going, okay, time to edit this thing. And like trying to figure out like, where do I start? Cause it was like well over, I was like a thousand clips and like not even anywhere near half of them made, made it in, but trying to go through all that and then narrowing it down to what it is now, um, was definitely like, a lot of work, but it taught me a lot. And, you know, I, I, you know, it is recent and I think that's definitely my, my favorite video I've made, um, to this yeah, day. It's, it's awesome to hear. Cause it, that was your first, like first doc. I'm glad to hear that because I, I loved watching it. It was so accurate of like what I imagined actually happened. It was a yeah. story. It was well shot. It, it, I really enjoyed that video. So I'm glad that you are still happy with it as well. Because there's videos that I've shot that I, I'm sure friends of mine, whoever would say they love, but I absolutely can't even remotely watch. So I'm glad that you're happy <laughs> yeah. with that one. Yeah. No, I, I am. I absolutely am. And, and and again, you know, there's obviously a lot of things and, you know, in an actual documentary that you watch on like Netflix or whatever like that, that, that you're like, well, like a real documentary is like kind of like this and everything. And it's like, well, yeah, that's the whole crew. But if you're just but by yourself and like, exactly, like that's, exactly. there's a, there's a different, but I wanted it to be like that, right? Like I wanted that feel and that, that look to it. I wanted it to be like just myself and just give you a very raw feel of kind of what goes behind the, the scenes gun. of a band. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's exactly. No, I it. love it. And that just to confirm, sorry, I think you already said, but that was your first like short doc, your solo doc by yourself. It was. Yeah. And I, I recommend if that anybody in videography, uh, try and do something like that. Right. Even if it's just a passion project. Um, I think it teaches you a lot. Like you can learn a lot from doing something like that. A hundred percent. A hundred percent agree. I, I shot one. I'm not sure if you remember, but on uh, diabetes awareness. And yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of those ones where I still look back on and have learned so much during that project that, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Definitely. If you're a videographer listening and you haven't shot a documentary yet, go out, start planning, go shoot. Yeah. Okay. So this is a bit of a hard question because it's depends on like how deep you want to dive. Um, so I guess I'll answer it first. But the question is, is what what do you think you need to work on now? Um, for me, I know for a fact that my color correction game, whatever you want to call it, has been steadily uh -huh. lacking for a while. Um, I've been really unhappy with it. I've been really just feeling like limited. And I didn't really, I didn't really realize it was because of the tools that until recently. Um, I was really contemplating switching over some software scenarios, switching over plugins and everything like that until within like the last week and a half, um, I've kind of had an aha moment, done a little bit of more research, found out about a few things, and now am starting the uphill climb on my color correction recovery mode, whatever I want to call it. Um, right. So what what's something that you really feel like you need to work on? See, I mean, it's interesting you say about color correction because like I, I haven't noticed anything wrong with your color correcting, but right. But when you're editing it, you're more nitpicky with your own stuff, obviously, right? But um, I haven't noticed 100%. this. It's just so you Thank know, you. like I haven't noticed anything wrong with the color correcting. Um, but that is something for sure. I think that you know maybe maybe I need to work on that too. But maybe that comes down to for me is my camera settings. Um, you know, obviously I know my gear. I think that I could get to know it better if that makes sense. Um. You know, I've never been one for numbers, I guess you could say. And, you know, obviously in, in this industry, there's a lot of certain numbers obviously going on with your cameras and 
ISOs, aperture, you know, all that kind of stuff, certain ruled thumbs to go by. Um, for me, I think it would just be getting to know some of my equipment better than what I know it as right now, just for the sake of being able to um, have more diversity in that aspect. I think I've been so focused on um, just trying to create a story out of everything I shoot and just kind of knowing what works and just going with that all the time. But I think I need to start like experimenting a little more and try different different sequences and different like you know different frame rates and certain snares and see how that looks kind of thing but it's definitely tough to do that when like i want to try some of these things out during let's say like a wedding but at the same time i'm like i don't know if it's the time and place to quite test that yet um on on a, a client's wedding right so um yeah i would say for me it's definitely getting to know my equipment a little better and then i've been really diving in deeply to like the business side of things right because as you know like you are your own business right like your name and sense is is you are the business and so trying to figure that out and and keeping in mind that yes creating is fun you know photo- uh, doing photography and videography all that is a lot of fun but to understand that if you're you know serious about doing this that it is a business and to treat it as so um so i've been diving into more of of that and and trying to um you know branch out more and uh you know, not that it's not professional, but but be very more aware that this is a business and not just something that I guess is a hobby. I guess you could say if that makes sense. A hundred percent, definitely, definitely makes sense. That's yeah, that's sweet. Great answer. A bit of a broad question, but uh, what part of videography is your favorite? So, is it editing, shooting, all the perks, all the trips, all the food from weddings, or <laughs> what? What's your favorite part? Um. Man, that's definitely a tough because I, I think dep- sometimes depends on like what you're filming and what you're having to edit, right? Um, I think it totally depends on that. Uh, you know, I think, you know, I, I oh, man, that's tough. I'm like stuttering trying to figure that out. I'm like, I, I think I enjoy both. I think that each has their pros and cons um, to each side of it. But I don't think I can necessarily narrow it down to like, I like one more than the other. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm at a, at a concert, or an event and you get that energy and everyone having a good time and, and filming that uh, is a blast. Do I like being up to like 2 a.m. sometimes doing that? No, but um, I enjoy that energy and, and what's happening and everything. And then when I get to go back and edit that, you know, to the artist's song, um, I really enjoy sitting down and doing so. I think the one part I might dislike the most when I'm editing is like we, were, we just touched on is color correcting. Um, and I just find it so tedious. And I think there's, again, like there's probably certain plugins that can make it easier for me and, and make it better, um, than what I'm using right now. And I, I think for me that that's probably the one thing I, I would, if I had to pick something to dislike the most might be that. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. We'll chat by the way, after this. (laughs) Um, uh, okay. And we can probably answer this one as well. How, how do you deal with tricky clients? I mean, it's kind of relevant to everyone Mm -hmm. in the creative field, I think. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because for me, obviously everyone is a client, but I don't want to treat them as so I, I try and get to know each person and actually trying to make a, a relationship out of it, right? Um, I want to get to know this person and what their business is or what their love story is or what their background is and their music kind of thing. Um, if everyone is being, I guess, tricky in a sense, you know, I guess it depends what it is. That's why you have contracts that they sign. Uh, if they're trying to get away with something, you can say, well, you signed the contract and it says this, like you knew this going into it, right? Or depending on what it is. Um, but I always do my best to cater to them in some aspect as as much as I possibly can to give them the right uh, product that they're asking for. But I obviously try to avoid anything um, beforehand to make sure everything's up front and that we write everything down that they're wanting for said video and everything that we've agreed upon. We've gone over, especially the contract and they've signed it. And that's that. Um, You know, I have been very fortunate to not have anybody that's been very tricky at all. Uh, Obviously, I've had some, uh, you know, wedding client that wanted like an endless amount of different like little nitpicky edits here and there um, when they're only allowed a certain amount after I edit everything. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, you just sometimes have to buck down and just understand that you're going to get those clients and um, you're not always going to please them. It's going to happen, but you're going to do your best to do the best you can and to make them happy. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I, I'm pretty much in the exact same boat. So that's a great answer. 
Yeah, just treat them as a as a as a friend if you can, right? Get to know them. That all help alleviate a lot of those things. Don't treat them as you're just a client, and you're kind of get money out of them, right? <laughs> I d- I definitely had that rub off on me off one client that I worked with, and I dragged you into at one point, and we both yeah. remember. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that uh, rubbed off on me, and I remember kind of catching myself like a few months later with kind of exactly what you said is treat clients like friends not like clients so exactly, i don't even really yeah. like the word clients to be honest so <laughs> no i don't either <laughs> okay um yeah so what's what's more important to you the views the receive of the video the terrible english or how it makes you feel like what what's the most important part of the created product of a video for you you know i I think I, when I was in like my late, late teens, early twenties, I was first starting off doing this um, and dabbling in on, on YouTube. Um, it was always all about views and trying to hop on trends and stuff like that. And I think now it shifted more towards, or a lot more to the fact of, I really don't, I guess, in a sense, care for views. I just post whatever I want. I, I want to post and, and make whatever I want to make and leave it at that. Um, but Obviously, you do want your videos, you know, people to see them and to recognize them and just to be recognized for what the video is, right? I don't necessarily need to be recognized myself at all. I just, I just wouldn't mind people like recognizing the video if they like it, um, for what the video is. So, you know, for me, I, I guess at the end of the day, um, it is what it is. We don't really have any control over of how many people can really see it. Um, or how well it does, but as long as you're just putting your best work out there that you that you know is your best work, and you're posting what you enjoy, I think that's the key thing is that it will get out there because um, people will see that the passion that you've put behind said video, uh, if it's something you're really passionate about. One hundred percent. Yeah. So it's like the the finished product is more important to you. Yeah. Than exactly. The, yeah. The gratitude when you have released it, which I one hundred percent agree with as well. Um, yeah, but I, I think it's important to note. There's there's something about release, uh, releasing a video is just like that you're really passionate about, and happy, and and releasing it, and just and just being happy with it, right? And not okay. caring about the views or not. So many things nowadays that can go into what the view count is. That mm-hmm. if you have that mindset, I think that's definitely like the healthiest mindset. Because yeah, I mean, algorithm changes weekly, daily. How many, however many times an hour you want to call it. Um, the time of day release, uh, your follow count, your hashtags, your demographic. There's so many millions of things that actually go into mm-hmm. the numbers. So, yeah, I, I definitely think it be it's way more important to obviously be proud and focusing on the actual product. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you can follow trends if if you want. There's nothing wrong with that. But end of the day, try and make it you know that video you and and authentic to you and. And not be stuck on the views because it's, I can tell you right now, if you're just so focused on views only and, and every, second, every second you post a video, you're like looking at it every like five minutes, like how many views does it get, this and that. Um, I can tell you that mentally that game doesn't end very well. <laughs> yeah, I think there's like a South Park moment where uh, Stan's dad is uh, chasing a dragon that's kind of familiar to that. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, next question. Uh, what would you, just back to a serious note, I guess for this one, what would you tell yourself when you're starting out on video or as a business owner or just as a videographer or as a creative, whatever, um, and kind of like actually think about this one for a moment, because I think I could probably talk for hours about things that I would tell myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, what, what would you tell yourself? Uh, patience that this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And if you truly enjoy doing this and something you're truly passionate about then you'll have the patience and the faith and and take the time to um invest in your craft and and understand that it's not going to happen right away might not happen tomorrow or the next day but as long as you keep opening up each door and showing up um for all you know it could be that next door that maybe you didn't push through and you stopped right then so just letting myself know that it's a long journey and you don't know how it's going to really pan out but just stick to it and stay stay focused on posting and 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 shooting what you want to shoot and create what you want to create and and not trying to be like others. Yeah, that's an awesome answer. I, I that's a hundred percent something you need to focus on or I need to focus on as well or needed to. So yeah, that's a great answer. Great answer. And it's 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 still something that I tell myself even 
today that it's Re- just, remind again, ourselves of yeah that's exactly why I, patience it's a marathon it's, you know we're there really and there really is no end goal you know what i mean like like even when you reach what you think is an end goal there's always more beyond that so to understand that like you just kind of got to keep pushing forward and keep moving on to the next thing and right. uh and don't kinda, don't get like, down there's no like end goal and i i it's funny, but like you have to, I always say that as well. And I set such crazy goals and I don't really cherish the moment when I achieve some of my goals. Um, but I think one thing that was one of the end goals is becoming a full-time videographer, becoming a videographer title-wise, career-wise, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I think that's something to be proud of as well. So that, that's definitely worth a lot at the end of the day, uh, just yeah. being able to cherish what you're actually doing. Um yeah, it's really important. Yep. And it's not always gonna not always gonna be easy. Gonna go through some ups and some downs. Um, but I always like to say, you know, you know, when the good moments happen, cherish them, recognize them, and then um keep moving on from there. You know, don't stay high on your own high if that makes sense. <laughs> All right. So we're going into the quick question round. Tanner, I've got some questions here that I'm gonna ask every one of my guests. Um okay. gonna fire off quick questions, uh try and keep them quick responses, and yeah, okay. We'll, let's let's get into it. Yeah, let's do it. What was your first camera? Uh first camera was a does the phone count or no? I guess not counting your phone, strictly camera. I mean it depends um, when you were born. <laughs> I guess it's true. Yeah, I know. I, I started using my, the first camera I used was on my phone. That's where I started creating content. But first actual camera I purchased uh, was a Canon. I can't remember what Canon. It wasn't like a DSLR or anything like that. I cannot recall. Like I said, I had it for like Rebel or two weeks yeah. at most. Yeah, and then that was it. And then I got the Sony A five thousand. Um, if you had one focal length to choose from, no zoom, just one strict prime focal length, what would it be? Fifty. Smart I'll choice. just keep it Smart simple, ahead. safe, it's safe, right? I got all kind of aspects covered there. Fifty. I'll just keep it there. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? Oh, shoot. Favorite movie. Oh, man. It, that's tough. It depends on genres, to be honest with you. Uh, like I'll take a animated few. I'll take a few. Mo- right? And animation. Uh, I liked Up. Pixar's Up. That was good. Really enjoyed that. Definitely pulled some heartstrings. <laughs> um, really enjoyed... Uh, La La Land um, with Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling. I thought that was just uh, filming wise of the movie was really well done. A lot of those scenes in there were one takes. Uh, if you go back and people ever watch it again, you'll notice that like a lot of the dancing sequences and everything were all just one takes, one camera just moving around the whole time. Really well done. Um, and then uh, comedy wise, um, it's, uh, it's Step Brothers. So can't, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be honest. Step Brothers. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not sorry I, about it. It's a great I, movie. You wouldn't be sorry about that. It's a great movie. <laughs> uh, don't get this. Don't get me started on the quote. Right. Uh, fa- favorite music video. Um, sorry, as soon as you said that, I thought favorite favorite magazine. Um, um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just stop about that right away. Good housekeeping. Music video. Good, good housekeeping. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, favorite uh, music video is probably I really enjoyed uh, Justin Bieber's Lonely um, just quick context again it was all one take very well done and just pretty much showcasing you know how he felt as a kid and um, all those people surrounding him but how he felt so lonely and how he was like on a, the video with him on a stage a massive stage and then showing the crowd and there was like nobody there when there actually was but this is kind of how he felt it was lonely obviously so like that music video i just thought the concept of it was was really well done as simple as it was favorite director and that can be music di- music director uh and ad creative director dop whatever um yeah yeah well uh, for instance uh, john favreau is one i really like you know obviously i enjoy the movies and everything like that and what he's done with some star wars stuff so um elf. he's very creative he's also an actor himself elf yeah what do you do with elf my gosh that no one thought that was going to go anywhere and it turned out to be incredible <laughs> um Creative directors too for for like artists, yeah. Um, um, Connor Brache and uh, uh, Rory Kramer, two guys um, who who you know photograph and video Justin and Sean Mendez, and uh, I think the work they do is, is incredible. I definitely uh, get some inspiration from them. Where's your favorite place to travel? Favorite place to travel? Well, um, I me and my family would always go to Hawaii or Maui more specifically there. Um, I love it, which is there's past summer. Um, 
it's like a second home to me. I love golfing there. Um, that's probably up there for sure. Um, that or in California, uh, down in uh, Disneyland, I'm going to be honest. Um, and I'm actually heading there in a few days. So it should be interesting. Uh, looking forward to it and just love the atmosphere of it. Love the creativity. Love the stories it tells each land when you're down there in Disney. Um, that's kind of where I get a lot of inspiration of what I do. Awesome. Uh, favorite time of day to shoot? I don't know if I have specifically have a favorite time of day. I think it obviously just depends on the sunlight. If it's like midday and it's just really sunny and bright out, obviously that's not the best. So then I'll wait obviously more towards maybe the sunset might be a little better um, or like early evening-ish. But uh, personally, I don't have too much of an overall preference on I'd say which what time. I think it really depends on how, how the weather is. Um, I, I do enjoy shooting. Uh, taking a lot of photographs or videos in, in the snow and favorite backdrop nature or city like urban wh- wh- what are you thinking forest man you know we live in such a, a foresty area here on, on the island um so it's hard to say no to that um i can't say no either to some nice city scape uh scenery which is really nice um i think for me um backdrop is like mountains and stuff like that i think like some snowy mountains and everything that's definitely my uh my go-to. All right, this one's a bit tricky. What okay. ignited your videography bug in under five words? Dude, under five. I'll give you my answer. Okay. Music. Oh, okay. Uh, music, acting, and I guess just overall creativity. Oh, that, that was a bit sense. over five words. Sorry, Tanner. See ya. Oh, no, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right, next one. If you weren't a videographer, what job or career would you be working or what job would you want to work? Well, wow, that's tough. If I wasn't doing any videography or this creative style of work, well, you know, I do some landscaping work, um, but I don't think it's something I would choose necessarily do if I had a choice. I, I think that if I wasn't doing this, um, I think I probably would have been a vet, to be honest with you, really enjoy animals um, or totally random too. I would have got more involved in music, but um, I think a career wise of what actually works is pr- probably more or less, um, I'd probably be a vet. I really enjoyed animals and stuff when I was growing up. So yeah, that, that might've been sense. something I might have pursued more. That makes sense for sure. Okay. This one's a little bit hard to answer now, um, but I think it's kind of interesting. I heard it on a podcast the other day. What, what would you, you don't have to lock this in, don't worry. I'm not going to hold you to it. Are you going to retire or are you going to keep creating? Am I going to retire or keep creating? I mean, I think it's going to get I'm to a point. I'm not talking about tomorrow, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, you know, I think I would get to a point where, you know, I'm like, what, nine years old? I probably don't know if I have the strength to even hold a gimbal and camera anymore. But... <laughs> Uh, I, I, and I don't, I, I don't necessarily yeah. mean uh, like creating like wedding videos or things like that. I just mean like, are you still going to be, yeah, like 90 years old? Are you going to want to pick up a, for me, I guess it would be very dated at that point, but I would just pick up like my point and shoot film cameras and just kind of go out once in a while and just sh- shoot maybe off my yeah. rocking chair or whatever. I, I just don't think that I'll ever stop being able to turn no, off that and, creative eye. No, I think I, that... that uh, I guess maybe retire is the wrong word. Yeah. yeah, but it's definitely hard, hard to turn that off because like, you know, as creators, we have to take breaks once in a while or I'll take like a couple weeks of a break of not even touching my camera because it just, I need that to reset and to get inspired again and recreate and it, it's good uh, to be able to do that as a creator. Um, I, so no, I don't think I'd ever really retire from doing this as long as, as long as I can keep doing it. I think I always will. And uh, I think it's something that's good. It keeps the mind going, but I don't think it's ever going to necessarily go away. It's even like a scenario I've used before. Like if I had someone just gave me like $50 million, or no, let's say $10 million, you know, and you just retire with that right now, like right now, $10 million, would I just sit around and do nothing? No, absolutely not. I would create more, to be honest with you, because <laughs> I'd oh, have more of that flex building that's, freedom. That's 100% <laughs> the answer. Maybe I'll change that, yeah. that question for next time. So episode two is going to be <laughs> that, that question. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. Well, great chatting with you. Um, for the listener, listeners and their friend um hopefully you guys learned something hopefully you got an insight into how videographers think a little bit and how we just kind of like approach things um whether you're new to videography or whether you're more experienced than us um i think it's good to always just kind of be surrounded by other videographers other creatives and yeah just kind of always have that mindset and be talking about it tanner do you have anything else to say before we uh call it a day on this episode no, no, nothing else. Just, uh, you know, to everyone else out there, don't be too hard on yourself. You know, like I said, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Keep creating and just post what you want to post. Just enjoy it. Love that. Great, great exit. 
great exit line. Reminder again, marathon, not a sprint. And awesome. Thanks, everyone. That's episode one. We'll see you next time. Awesome. Thanks, Dan.